hey, I quickly wanted to show you the more utils package because I knew a couple of the utilities that were in there, but uh, I quickly took a look out of curiosity and there is a lot more stuff that sounds uh, really useful. So I'm going to show it to you. So basically more utils, I mean, you probably know core utils like uh, touch, ls, cat, the basic utilities that you use in uh, everyday uh, shell scripting life. But there is also an extra package, so uh, it can be uh, Pacman can be found in the package uh, More Utils on, on Arch Linux, for example. Uh, but yeah, it's named More Utils in every single distribution, as far as I know. And basically, it's just a set of extra utilities uh, on top of the existing one. And the, the one that I already knew about was the sponge utility. So in the previous video, I mentioned that, for example, said, uh, let's say, uh, I want to delete uh, all the hello lines in a file, and I already have a file foo, and uh, looks like this, so it removed the, the hello lines, whatever. But, uh, and you can, of course, re re redirect that to a new file, but maybe you just want to uh, do it on the current file, and you don't want to bother too much about it. There is the GNU extension that uh, is dash i, but if you are not on something that doesn't support the GNU extension, you can use Sponge, which comes with uh, more utils. And so basically what Sponge does, it will take everything on the standard input and write it into a file. So you can say uh, foo like do, uh, let's say foo2. Uh, but okay, that defeats the purpose. But basically, if you do that directly with the set command, like uh, foo, uh, it will... It will uh, you can see that now foo is empty because it opened the file and uh, cleared it before uh, putting std in. in. So, uh, so now I can move foo2 into foo. And, uh, and if you use a sponge, it, uh, it won't do that. So, uh, well, now that defeats the purpose. But up, if I put a hello in there and I uh, use my uh, sponge and I use the foo file this time, you can see that foo is intact. Uh, I mean, it was uh, what STD in uh, got, basically. So that's uh, quite a useful utility. Uh, I mean, for, uh, yeah, just, I guess it, it only, I only ever used it for set, but it can probably be useful for other stuff. The other one I already knew was uh, the air no command. So uh, this is, if you program a lot in C, this is very useful. So this will just list all the possible error codes that are on your system. And you can see it lists uh, the, the constant that is associated with the error code, the, uh, well, just the number value of it and the message. So for example, if you, I don't know, you forgot what the, the constant is for some number, you can just search, uh, grep, uh, well, uh, whatever the code is, and then you get the constant and the message that uh, it should be, which is, uh, which is quite nice, quite, quite uh, handy if you don't want to like match Erno on like some arbitrary number. Uh, another one is Vipe, uh, which will basically open your editor and you can write uh, whatever uh, you want in it. And once you save and exit, it will pass the output of what you, I mean, it will pass what you just wrote in your editor uh, into uh, into std out. So in this case, I pipe it to the, the cat command with, with E. And you can see that uh, it adds a little dollars for the new lines quite probably quite useful uh, to just yeah quickly uh, run uh, your input on, on some scripts there is also the vidir uh, command which will just open all the files in the current directory and allow you to uh, to either delete them so let's say i want to delete b and i want to uh, rename uh, the file c to uh, hello hello there uh, so and you can see that if I, uh, oops, if I ls, it removed b and uh, c was removed to hello there. Very quick, I know there is more advanced utilities like I know, uh, like the ranger uh, file explorer and stuff like that have like, or um, the q, uh, qmv or q, uh, I don't know. There is other utilities to do bulk renaming in your editor, but this is a very simple one. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it looks quite handy. Uh, especially if you can't you install a, a lot of stuff on the system you're working on. Another one very simple that uh, I see could be useful in scripts is uh, to check if there is a, a standard something on the standard input. So if 
it's if and a, I don't know, N E. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, wait, what? Uh, ah, yeah, it will run a command. Okay, my bad. So if I say echo, uh, maybe I should stop uh, being French. Uh, it You give it uh, F and E, and then you give it a command, uh, like so. And if the standard input is empty, it won't run anything. And if you pass something on the standard input, it will uh, run the command. So if you say uh, echo, uh, hello, this, it will say hello there. If you uh, don't pass anything, it won't print anything. Quite handy to uh, yeah, only execute something as if there was an output of a command. Uh, this is very small stuff, but there is also chronic, which will, uh, if, let's say I want to cut foo, uh, if the command exits with a, a zero exit code, it won't print anything, but if there is a, an error, it will print the, the error. Uh, and this is useful, apparently, they say in, uh, this was made for uh, cron tab or cron jobs, like instead of, uh, like always uh, doing those redirects, you can just pass your stuff to, to chronic. Uh, ah, okay. The difference between directly redirecting yourself is that if there is an error, it will, uh, it will redirect the STD out and STD error to the thing. But if everything is fine, it won't redirect anything. Okay, that makes sense. So it's more like, uh, yeah, you want a diagnostic only if there was an error. Uh, another quick one uh, for scripting, which, uh, you know, like when you ever want to like get your IP address or your uh, or your network mask or anything, you have to parse this, this horrendous uh, thing that IPA gives you, or you can like, like do more stuff with, with this. I, I don't know, but it's complicated as you can see. Uh, so I don't want to do that, or oh, there is uh, the old if config, and pff, you can also parse that, but it's not very consistent. So there is the, in more utils, there is the if, uh, if data, and for, uh, basically you pass it, uh, your, uh, the name of your interface, in this case it's my Wi-Fi interface, and you say, for example, if uh, dash p, it will print the thing, uh, like the, the, the mask and your IP and so on. If you do PA, it will directly print your IP, nothing else included. And like, uh, you can see that uh, there is a lot more of those. And basically, if you, like you literally want something, you don't want to grep or anything, or uh, like do regex to, to parse the, the IP, which I've done in the past, uh, you can just use this and it will just literally give you the address or the information you need, which is really nice. There is a, the if is UTF-8, which, I mean, you can guess what it does, is UTF-8, uh, it returns, uh, uh, yeah, status on my thing, it returns zero if it's UTF-8, and if it's not, uh, not cats, <laughs> uh, the random, it says, uh, this is not UTF-8, and it returns a, a non-zero exit code, pretty simple, uh, there is the, the P utility, yeah, that one is a great one. Uh, it's basically like T, but for piping. So instead of uh, like T, you, uh, it will take whatever is in STD in and it will uh, write it to files and also to STD out. Uh, what P does is uh, it will distribute it to multiple commands. So if you say um, this to, uh, I already had the example, you, you specify the commands as arguments, so in this case, uh, cat e and uh, some tr, and it will uh, first pass it to the first command, then to the second command, uh, like so. And to be honest, this could probably be replaced by like uh, uh, process substitution, which I've done a video about in the past, which I will link. But if I do t like so, and uh, cat e, then uh, T R B A. I think that should be the uh, almost the same behavior. So first, std out is printed, and then it executes the two commands. So uh, so yeah, uh, and pff, I don't know. Just for the name of it, uh, I don't know if I would use it in a script. Uh, you know, if you have to share that with coworkers, that could be a bit embarrassing. Uh, what's another great one? Oh yeah, there is a. Z run, so here you can see that I have a foo.gz, I compressed it, 
which is the same foo file that I used before, simple text file. So what I can do is use Z run and then you specify the just any commands and all the arguments that you will pass that have like the, an extension that it recognizes as something that is compressed, it will uncompress them for you and pass it to the command as arguments. So you can see that uh, here cat just directly uh, got the uncompressed file. But of course, if I run it uh, like so, uh, and I, uh, you, USR bin cat, that's the downside of having a custom cat command. You can see that it's random, but you pass it to Z run and it automatically decompresses it for you, which is quite nice, quite handy. Uh, there is the uh, a bit of a strange one. It's like a kind of diff, but slightly better. So uh, like I have this file like N1, that is the, the, file, the numbers from uh, 1 to 10 and N2. That is the uh, same thing, but it's, I mean, okay, it's 1 to 20 and uh, it increments by 2. Basically, two files that have numbers in them uh, and different numbers. And what you can do with the combine command is you can say, uh, you can have uh, binary operations on them. So, uh, Boolean operations on them. So, here it will say, print all the lines that are in N1 and in N2, like so. And you can see that uh, it filter, filters them like this, or you can say OR. Uh, you can say XOR, you can say uh, not anything like that, you know, it's pretty nice. Uh, definitely, definitely can see a use for it uh, in the future. Um, there, is a, there is one called uh, lock do, which apparently is deprecated because now we have F lock, which is some other commands, but I found it still uh, quite nice. So uh, log do is like just some kind of uh, yeah some kind of mutex or locking system so with files so here it will uh, the log file is called just lock and if you uh, run another log do somewhere else it will wait until the lock is uh, available so in this case don't worry too much about this command it will just I don't know print some numbers uh, every uh, every 30 300 milliseconds so if I run this you can see that it just prints them like so. And if I open a, a new another uh, thing, let me run it again. And if I print it here, you can see that log do lock is already taken. And what you can do is specify the W option so that it will wait. Uh, and if I run it here and here, you can see well, it's not very apparent because I missed uh, the mark a bit. But let's run, let's run it again. You can see that this one waits and then it starts uh, as soon as the lock is available. And you can also have uh, uh, some kind of uh, like a read write uh, lock, I think, or uh, like there is other options basically that makes it a bit more powerful. And it seems quite nice, but yeah, as I said, they say it's deprecated. And finally, there is the Oh, I forgot the one of the best one, the TS command. That's one that I really see myself using in the future. So uh, I already have a, a command prepared on the side. So again, it's like uh, I give it uh, 10 numbers and then uh, it's again the same sleep and echo as before. So this will just, uh, just wait and print the numbers like so. And if you pass any output to the TS commands, what it will do, it will take each line and timestamp them. So if I do this, you see it adds a, a timestamp to each of them. This is awesome for uh, like very quick logging of some random command that doesn't have like timestamp built in into its uh, logging system. And of course, you can have like different formats uh, as you like. Uh, just look at the man if you want to know more. But yeah, this is quite quite a useful one. Uh, and besides uh, that, the last one, which is probably not that useful, it's since uh, it's like, uh, you know, there is the GNU parallel command, which is quite useful. I have never used it, but apparently it's great. Uh, but apparently more utils has also uh, a parallel more utils command. Uh, and so you can specify the number of job and then you specify it some, some commands. And uh, after dash dash, and then uh, each one of the other arguments will be one argument to the generated commands. So, uh, well, basically, it will create uh, five of those with those different arguments, 
and it will run them in parallel. So here you can see that it will do two and then two and then one. Of course, if I, if I remove the, the number of jobs, it will just do them in parallel all at once. But yeah, I can definitely see myself using that in the future, although I should learn the, the GNU parallel one, which is quite useful. Uh, the reason I haven't learned about it is because the, the XRLs command already has a, a dash p option. Up. Uh, if I can... Well, I forgot where it is, but... <laughs> <laughs> or, ah yes, p max proc. So you can already do like uh, like process multiple commands in parallel with xargs. So yeah, I didn't so see the the use for uh, parallel yet. But this does seem quite quite useful. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about more utils. Um, yeah, I'm happy that I quickly took a look uh, because some of them are definitely gonna come handy in the near future. Of course, the disadvantage is that it's not standard, so you have to install a package. And if you want to port your script to somewhere else or make something useful to other people, it's not, uh, I don't know, probably shouldn't use it unless you, you really, really need it. Uh, or except you have control over the, the infrastructure, like it's your job and you, you know, uh, you can install whatever on all the servers. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for uh, more utils and uh, see you in the next one.